Welcome back to Tabletop Salt. I'm Ross, and today I'm going to give you my first impressions of Vigilus Ablaze and Chaos Space Marine Codex Mark II. So, very interesting approach we've got here when it comes to these new books. What I'll do is I'll probably throw them up for you just to be able to see them. And then obviously when I'm going through them, I'll actually show you. So, very interesting what we had here. Uh, we knew that there was going to be a second part of Vigilus, and we knew it was predominantly going to be towards Chaos Space Marines. In the first one, we obviously saw a lot of, you know, uh, we saw a lot of the Loyalist Marines, we also saw Orcs, we saw Elder, we saw Admech. With Vigilus now, we are seeing a predominant focus on Chaos Space Marines along with a wee bit of demons on there as well. So certainly if you were to look at this one, it's predominantly the Chaos faction when you're looking at Imperium, Chaos uh, and Xenos. This one is all about Chaos. Very interesting in that one, when that came out, we obviously got these new stuff, uh, the new formations, etc., which I will talk about. And then we also got the Volume 2 Codex, which was a big precedent of when everyone was asking what's going to happen next after they've completed the codexes. Uh, don't know what we're going to have about Yanari. Don't know there. But very interesting now we've seen we're going to get Mark II codexes, uh, or Volume 2 Codex, whichever one you prefer to, to boom as. And I really like that idea. It has been a year and a half, and a couple of people are going to be annoyed the fact that, you know, uh, the, basically all the sort of FAQs are now coming into another book. And I think that's a good thing for a couple of reasons. One, uh, if you've not got it, you can get Vigilus of Blaze in which case the units are mostly from there into here and uh, that works out quite well. Though I do believe there's actually some subtle changes in here that are not touched elsewhere but we'll go into that later. Either way, you know, you can take your old codex, use Vig uh, Vigilus Blaze and you get the formations. Great. Secondly, as I just found out today, if you've got the digital version of the Chaos Space Marine Codex, uh, you're going to get the updated one for free. Now, don't quote me on that, I'm 99.9999999% sure that's true. But that certainly is pushing a lot towards the sort of digital versions. Excellent idea, a good bit of goodwill on that one. I don't believe that when they redo a codex entirely, they'll give the digital ones out free. That, you know, when they're doing like lore and stuff, there's a lot of work that goes into the books. I don't see them basically giving out the codexes digitally for free once you've bought one. But certainly when they update them, uh, certainly to this, they are going to... Uh, Essentially, given for free, hopefully. That's a good idea. Maybe also good for people who got the physical copy, but it does cost money to print. The other thing, as well, is this very good for new players. Now, obviously, people who may be not too familiar with Chaos Space Marines, not, not too familiar with the FAQs, etc., that they are going to essentially get the updated rules and they don't buy a book, then they've got to buy chapter approved. Now, it's now all consolidated there. Now, we've had quite a bit of changes with, uh, with this edition it's now about maybe solidifying the codexes a little bit more. Very interesting, I'm intrigued what they're going to do in summer then. What are they going to do? Uh, uh, you know, that's a, probably a video for another time. I've got many, 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 many theories. I might mention one or two, but you're not here to see that today. You're here to see about Vigilus Blaze and Chaos Space Marine Codex. So let's firstly go into Vigilus Blaze. Yeah, dramatic pause. So, Vigilus of Blaze is interesting that there is a quite a bit of lore, and I read this more than I did uh, Vigilus Define, and I quite like some of it, it's pretty good. Um, I don't want to speak about the lore too much, mainly reason being is some people might get angry that I reveal too much. There is, you know, a fair bit of combat of uh, certain people, and there is a resolution when it comes to Vigilus, and I think that sort of you know, what goes on to the war in the future. I don't want to say too much, but we do get a lot of, it, you know, twists and turns on this one. Star Cell quite interesting as well. Something I did not expect, but it went there, you know, and you get a lot of details on terms of a little bit, if you love the lore, I think you're really going to dig this in general. When they put lore stuff together and it's a mixing of factions, you don't see that so much in the codexes. You do see them when they fight other ones, but really how they all interact on a planet. This is really, really cool and super detailed on it as well. I can really see myself get into this, but it's a lot of lore. A lot of lore in that one. So to go into other things as well, what have we got? They've got the Forces of Chaos, all the stuff in there, really good on the Legions as well. Uh, obviously the Imperium, etc. Really nice, absolutely love it. 
They've also got the Vigilist Ablaze campaign. Now, I'm not 100% sure if they had this in Vigilist Defiant, uh, but they do have campaign on it. And it's got loads of rules and lore and things for you to basically play a Vigilist campaign as such. And a lot more to it than I really expected. And I'm absolutely loving this. This should give ideas to people on how to play. They mentioned basically sort of, you know, big guns never tire, but with special rules, etc. I really like that. Uh, I think basically giving more ideas for narrative play, certainly when you saw, was it the uh, Urban Conquest? They are really stepping up their campaign sort of ideal, you know, ideas for this. And I really dig it for that alone. Extra missions, now we've never really used the extra missions when it comes to you know, uh, narrative based ones, but certainly when you're playing the same ones either within the rulebook, chapter approved, chapter approved to the uh, next one, having these extra ones are quite handy and gives you something different. There's some crazy deployment zones which I absolutely love as well. So, yeah, really, really nice in that one. Added battle zones. We've not really played battle zones as much, but I can really, really dig it. There's a spaceship one here as well, perilous caverns. So, adding in a bunch of rules of just enhance your experience and I really like that. I think that's really good. I've not played much of the battle zones but I certainly want to. War zones etc. Really really nice. So I really like that one. What I'm going to do, I'm trying to decide here whether I'm going to speak about the Chaos Space Marine part or I'm going to talk about what comes in Vigilus Ablaze. Yeah let's go into Vigilus Ablaze. So there is many changes in terms of we've got Abaddon, we've got Lord, uh, Lords of, uh, Lords of Disco, uh, Lord Discordant, yep. Awesome. Master of Executions, uh, the Dark Apostle, major changes in that one. I'll speak, and Havocs, Havocs, my god. Yes, uh, yeah, there's a lot to talk about them. I'll go into units themselves, points, etc., when we go into the Codex, which will come second. But what I'll quickly touch on, because this is mainly a chaos video, is we'll talk about the stuff you find in Vigilus Blaze uh, in terms of uh, their detachments, etc. So in it, there are basically all chaos, all chaos and one demon one. So to speak about the detachments themselves, now we're in uh, Vigilus Define, they really sort of made them quite specific to the legions. There were some that were universal and then a lot of them was like this, a Dark Angel one. And I think then, you know, with Astra Militarum and Anmec, they made them a bit more universal. I think that maybe restricts it when it comes to the loyalist side, but they certainly got some good ones. What they've done with uh, with the ones in uh, uh, Ablaze is that they have made, I think, one specific, yeah. One is specific, so, you know, just to go into that one, the Bringers of Despair is Black Legion. It is Black Legion because Bringers of Despair are sort of Ab Abaddon's personal guard of Terminators, and that's what it affects into. Really nice sort of stuff in there, you know, to, you know, Chosen of the War Master, really good rules there. I like them. You then got the Devastation Battery, so you go that if that's your Elite Black Legion sort of Terminator one. Devastation Battery is sort of your, uh, you know, hard hitting back units, so that's your Chaos Lord, Warpsmiths, Havocs and Obliterators. I highly rate Havocs and Obliterators now, we'll go into that a wee bit. But a Warlord trait here is Armor Bane, reroll wound rolls for, uh, of one for attacks made by friendly Devastation Battery units that are within six inches of the Warlord if the target is a vehicle. That's really good, so re I love it when you get an augmentation to wound rather than hit sometimes, which uh, Chaos Space Marines have the ever, ever good veterans of the long war. Having that reroll ones means that, you know, on average, if you're playing Havocs or Blair Rares, especially new Havocs, we'll go into that later, uh, you're going to be able to reroll once to hit because you have Chaos Lord, make him your Warlord, give him that, and you reroll ones to wound when you target vehicles. Before you know it, those vehicles are going to get a lot of really reliable wounds and infections along the war as long as you're not renegades then yeah that is a solid warlord trait i really like it i think uh, if you are going to play a lot of blur rares and now blur rares don't need to be babysat as much because they do have hit in combat You've got havocs that's really really nice um, you can give a uh, relic of chaos at the start of shooting phase pick a friendly devastation bash unit within six inches of the bearer Enemy units do not receive benefit of cover against the unit's weapons this phase. Again, solid sort of relic. So the Warlord train the relic, I totally dig. Uh, they have a stratagem, which is wall breakers, which basically do bear against buildings. Okay, but a uh, punishing volley, this is good for one command point, and you're only going to use this once. 
use the stratagem at the end of your opponent's first movement phase if you did not have first turn. So, yeah, you lose first turn, darn it. One command point, pick a devastation battery unit from your army, that unit can shoot as if it was the shooting phase. No minuses. You know, your opponent goes, I'm going to move forward towards you. Cool. Have a hail of bullets. With Havocs or even uh, Blair Rares, this is going to be fantastic. Uh, certainly if you play either one of those units and you take the Devastation Battery and you lose first turn, every time you're going to use that. Every, every, every time. So I really like that one. And keep in mind, Havocs are awesome now. I'll tell you later. Uh, got Call of the Dams, which if you're super into Dark Apostles and Chaos Cultists, yep, there's some fun things in there. Add one to uh, Dice Rolls, etc. Uh, Demonkin Rituals, you know, Dark Apostle, Master Possession, Possessed, Greater Possessed. So you see the idea of Far Range Unit, Cultists, uh, Demon, you know, Demons into Chaos Units, uh, Soul Forged ones, which is uh, your Warpsmith Demon Engines. I've not checked this one up as much, but I really like what they've done with it uh, in terms of uh, Demon Engines. They're now making them a lot more interesting. They didn't include Master of Possession in this one for the Soul Forged pack. So, the Warlord trait for them is add two to the movement characteristics of friendly Soul Forged pack demon engines while they're within six inches of your Warlord. Uh, interesting, the problem with that is that only your Warpsmith can be, and they're quite slow when you compare them to, say, uh, uh, not, you know, a Mauler Fiend. So, adding two inches essentially probably on the first go, and then they'll advance and they'll probably be out of range for the next turn. Kind of difficult on that one, unless there was some way to really get the warp smith to move up along with it. And don't say warp time because you'll probably put that on the Mauler Fiend. I think that's just making it a little bit trickier. It's nice to have the extra movement, but you needed a warlord who was able to be mobile. Possibly make it, you know, a warlord can choose one unit within 18 inches and that, you know, adds three inches to its movement. That might have been a bit more better to be able to move it forward or choose an enemy unit. Uh, all, you know, demon engines move closer towards it by three inches. Uh, without any effect, but they must move towards it. Having one that's an aura ability, but it can't keep up, is not as ideal. Uh, you also have, uh, you know, their relic, which is the next weapon. It basically makes the Mechandrite, uh, hi uh, not the Mechandrite Hive, their sort of claws when they get attacked. It's quite cool. It's a melee weapon, strength plus one, minus one AP, two damage. Each time the bear fights, it can make one, and only one, attack with this weapon for each enemy model within one of the, one of inch of the bearer. So you've got a horde around your uh, warpsmith, you've just got to draw a whole bunch of attacks around them. Could be nice, could be fun, mm, a bit difficult on that one. So in terms of uh, other ones, you've got Infernal Engines, this model can charge, you know, it's one strategy and basically allows you to advance, uh, charge and advance, pretty nice. The whole strap Toro, I really want to dig this one. There's a couple of tricks with it. It's nice now to give you an idea of this one is that basically units with uh, jump packs can go into this host. Has a nice warlord trait. Add two to charge rolls made for friendly host reptile units that are within six inches of your warlord. So that can be quite good because basically you jump down with say two units of warp talons uh, and the chaos lord who's your warlord. You're adding two to both their charge ranges meaning that your charge is essentially going to be seven inches which is a lot nicer than nine. So that's quite nice as well. Add in Vicious Descent, use this strategy when a host reptile unit win uh, from your army is set up in the battlefield at the end of the movement phase. You can reroll hit rolls for attacks made by that unit until the end of the turn. I want to like that one, reroll hits for one command point is nice, but you have to do it uh, essentially when they set up. What if you don't make it? You've spent a command point and it might not work out. That's not ideal. But still, uh, I think adding plus two to the charge is really, really quite nice. Fallen Angels, you've obviously got your, uh, now I won't go into them too much, David absolutely loves Fallen, he's a huge fan of Cypher. Uh, so there's some nice things there as well, that basically when you tame that one, uh, you can add Sorcerers and Rhinos, allowing Fallen to then get uh, a transport, which I think is a big improvement for them. And adding Sorcerers as well does mean, I'm 9% sure it's Sorcerers that can be in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They place keyword, yeah, yeah. I'm 9% sure it's Sorcerers that can go into there as well. Either way, Pretty good. Yes, I can't see there. Pretty sure it's Sorcerers. Don't judge me if that's wrong. Yep, Sorcerers and Chaos Rhinos. Nailed it. So, uh, if you're into a fallen army, yeah, there is that. I think there's a lot of people who are hoping for more, but will that happen in the future? We'll see. Legion of Skulls uh, is your Chaos Demons one. So, this is the ones, uh, you know, if you're going to go corn, you want skulls. Here's one for you to give you a wee bit extra one there. 
Uh, Blood Blessed add one to your Warlord's attack characteristic. In addition, while there uh, are any enemy characters within six inches of your Warlord, add another one to your Warlord's attack characteristics. Uh, so you're just getting more attacks. Nice, not bad, okay. I don't know the demon ones as well. I know there's loads of rerolls hits for corn. There's one that I know that I use quite a lot, so I think that's quite good. Uh, we've also got Relic of Scoreplay, roll 1d6 at the end of your fight phase if any enemy models are slain by the bear of that phase, and 2 to the result if any of the models slain uh, was a character. On a 4+, plus, the bear regains d3 wounds. I imagine that could be really good on uh, Bloodthirsters. That's actually a really solid relic uh, for the Bloodthirsters because you're going to kill people, you're going to kill things, you can might kill characters. Good way to recover wounds when they're obviously going to be targeted down by you know, big things that go, you've got more than 10 wounds, pew pew! So that's quite nice as well. Stratagems, uh, pick a, you know, use a stratagem in the shooting phase, shooting phase? Gone! Pick a Legion of the Skulls model from your army, pick an enemy unit within 8 inches of this model invisible to them and roll a d6. If the result equals or exceeds this mod model's bliss skill, that enemy unit suffers d3 mortal wounds. So yeah, not bad, you know, if you've got something that has a 2 plus bliss skill, d3 mortal wounds. I don't rate just getting D3 mortal wounds for one command point, there is better ways I think. There may be situations where causing D3 is important, but you might only cause one for one command point, not as ideal. So yeah, Red Tide, two command points, use a stratagem in your charge phase, pick an enemy unit that was charged by a Legion of the Skulls unit from the army, you can add two to the charge roll for other Legion of the Skulls units from your army that declare charge against the same enemy unit, and do not declare charges against any other enemy units until the end of the phase. Not bad, if you're basically horning up, you come in deep strike, I could see that being really good. David has certainly appeared from like the warp with loads of corn, you know, blood letters, and usually led by a demon, you know, greater demon as well or something. And uh, yeah, it causes me problems, so I could see that being quite good as well. But yeah, let's go back to the chaos, and this is probably the part where I say Vigilus of Blaze really shines. This is where we look at the sort of Black Legion extra stuff, which is quite nice, but really good as well, is the Renegade chapters. So we've seen some hints on them as well. So Black Legion has a bunch of stuff there, you know, we have relics, we have stratagems, the extra ones, abilities, the War Masters Legion, uh, you know, if your Battleforge or troops in the Black Legion uh, detachment get this, such a unit is within half range of objective mark controls that even if there are uh, more any modules in range. If an enemy model uh, within range of the market has similar ability, then it's controlled by a player. So that's sort of what you expect in that one. Interestingly, uh, and this is where I'd say there's one part disappointment, one part I think is actually okay, but we have Mere Mortals. So if you've not heard about this, this has probably been shown already. Mere Mortals is Chaos Cultists do not gain the Black, Le uh, Black Crusaders Legion trait. And that is in this book as well. Cultists no longer get Legion traits. And as far as I can tell, and I'll double check it, their points haven't gone down again. So, and since they came out, they've gone up a point and they've not gained a legion and they've lost their legion trait. I get it though. Uh, it makes more sense than, say, the Predators not having it or the Vehicles in general. You know, only the Bikers, Infantry, and Demon Princes. I understand the cultists not getting it, and I can accept that. So, fine, fine, fine. You know, it's pushing people towards more. Chaos Space Marine units. I get it, I like it, I wish I didn't like it. Let me know your thoughts on that one. Black Crusaders, the rule has not changed as far as I can tell. I am not a bad, you know, a fan of the Black Crusaders rule. I don't like this advance and then you can shoot and stuff. I don't like it. Uh, it's also when you look at the Necron one, they've got a vastly superior one where all weapons become assault weapons, even heavy weapons. This is only your rapid fire one. We'll get into discussion about Legion traits later. So we have the Black Legion stratagems, they've got a whole bunch of stratagems in there as well. Quite nice that they've got a bit more in that variety. Relics of the Legion, so you've got uh, I think six new uh, relics, which is quite good. Uh, Angel's Bane, they've shown already, was pretty good. Each time bit, uh, another one, Cloak of Conquest, each time the bear slays an enemy character, add one strength, attacks and leadership. Yeah, not bad. So it's really nice to have these sort of extra options if you are going to go Black Legion, which obviously if you're going to be feeling a bad and an awesome new model, you're definitely going to. So this gives you a couple more tricks on them. You've also got new Warlord traits. I do believe one is so you can start you know, farming command points, which obviously Chaos didn't really have. 
you've now got one of your demon kin one, and now you've got one in Black Legion, uh, which is while your wallers on the battlefield, roll a d6 each time you spend a command point. To use a stratagem on a 5 plus, that command point is immediately refunded. Really good. Uh, I think that one's probably one of my favourites. That one's good. I've never really had a chance to, but I use up a lot of command points in Chaos Space Marines, so having that ability is very good. Yeah. There's also Indomitable, all damage suffered by your Warlord is half, rounding up, that's a Baron's got that naturally, but I think that's really good as well if you are going to be facing things like uh, Thunder Hammers, it's going to pay off dividends. Really if your Warlord's going to be up there and doing damage, cool. Yeah, really, really good. In terms of the last thing we're probably going to talk about when it comes to, you know, the, the Vigilus of Blaze book. We're going to talk about the Renegade traits, and I think this is where, wow, yeah, they're going to be a lot of fun. The Renegade traits have been massively improved, and I'd probably say these traits, in a long part, vastly, vastly overshadow the Chaos Space Marine Codex ones in a lot of cases. So, we'll go with Red Corsairs, Raiders from the Maelstrom. Units this trait can advance and charge in the same turn. That was the old Renegade rule. Done. But they've improved it. In addition, if a detachment contains three or more units for this trait, that det detachment's command points benefits are increased by one command point. Excellent! Any detachment you take, as far as I can tell, if yep, that has three or more, which most detachments will, you get an extra command point. That detachment command benefits are increased by three command points instead if, it's con if it contains three or more units of Chaos Space Marines. It's a big thing to talk about on this one. Cultists have gone up in points, have lost the Legion rule. If you take them in a squad of 10, they are 50 points. In Chaos Space Marines, as far as I'm, I'm aware, they are 30 points, give or take. That means when you take them in a unit of 5, math being math, I think they're 65 points. 15 points extra, and if you take 3 of them, which means you're spending an extra 45 points, you're going to get 3 extra command points and get a unit that has, you know, they're not going to do much in damage, same as Chaos Cultists, but they endure a lot more, so good for sending points. And you're getting three command points. And if you train a battalion, that's kind of important. I'm interested to see what that's going to play an effect later on. Uh, one of David's favourite one, Crimson Slaughter, a moment's peace. If a unit with this trait destroys an enemy unit, roll a d6 on a 5 plus, you gain a command point. In addition, this unit uh, automatically passes morale tests until the end of the turn. Excellent. I can see that being really good if you're taking infantry based things such as the Blair Airs and the Havocs, because they're awesome. They're going to destroy things like No Tomorrow. So, yeah, that's pretty good. Uh, the Purge brings about Oblivion. You can reroll hit, hit rolls for attacks made by a unit. This trait that target enemy units that have lost one or more wounds already this turn. Wow, that can be awesome. That can be awesome. Multiple small units do one bit of damage, and then you've got a whole bunch of reroll hits. You've take, your opponent's taking a big thing like Magnus. Magnus, Magnus, Magnus. Then, yeah, wound them once. The shots will just pile in. Really, really really like that one. Uh, Scourged uh, Omniscient? Yep. You can reroll one hit roll for attack made by models in the unit with this trait each time it shoots or fights. In addition, when a unit with this trait fires Overwatch, they successfully hit on a 5 plus instead of a 6 plus with respect to fine models, bliss skill or any other modifiers. So I really like that one as well. I think similar to, oh, I want to say Salamanders, uh, ooh, I shouldn't say uh, Loyalists, but there's other armies that do that as well. I think Tau as well, one I really like, uh, Sekia. Uh, you can reroll one of the dice, I think it's, you know, yeah, one of the hit ones. So it really favours sort of multiple small units. Works really well when I play Tau, I absolutely love that one. Also being able to Overwatch, say you're going to use huh, small squads of Havocs or Blair Airs, yeah, that could work out really, really well. And then the Overwatch is not bad, I don't really rate it as much but I'm seeing it work more in games these days, so yeah, I can dig it. Brazen Beast, Ren the Foe, each time you make a wound roll of 6+, six plus, six plus for an enemy model uh, made by a model of this trait in the fight phase during a turn in which it charged, was charged or performed heroic intervention, that has resolved with AP-4. So you can add in Veterans Long War, so that should, I believe, it doesn't say unmodified attack, uh, yeah, 5+, plus, and you're going to cause AP-4. That can be deadly. It's predominantly a fight phase, so you know that's not going to work for my favourite new units, Havocs and Blairers. But still, that's really solid. And that's like all your infantry, all your, your new Chaos Lords. That could be really cool. Demon Prince. <gasps> Malefic Talon. 
Oh, but you can't use uh, Vector the Long War on Doom Prince. I got that one wrong, someone called me on it. Thanks. Uh, either way, I really like that one. That's really cool. Flawless Host. Death to the, the Imperfection. Each time you make a hit roll of 6 plus for an attack made by a model with this trait in the fight phase, it can immediately make an extra attack against the same unit using the same weapon. This is in addition to any uh, extra attacks granted by Death to the False Emperor. These attacks cannot be. So it's like Death to the False Emperor, but everything. And you get it twice in Imperiums. All of these are awesome. Now, maybe I'm wrong. I like them all. I want to try them all. Really, really, really good. Mmm. I can't wait to start reading people's comments. Maybe not, not even in our video, but other ones. Just people's thoughts. Really nice. Uh, Warlord Treats, you get one for each faction. I can't remember which one I like the best. Uh, you know, I think you can get extra relic, you know, as one attack. Yep, uh, reroll uh, the purge, reroll wound rolls one for attacks made by your warlord. In addition, you can reroll damage uh, rolls for weapons used by a warlord. Reroll wounds of one and damage. You want to take a parfist or something there, although someone might tell me a better weapon uh, like thunder hammer. Yep. Uh, the scourged shall truth at the end of the fight phase. You can pick an enemy unit within three inch war. Uh, you can pick an enemy unit within three inch warlord. This unit cannot be picked to fight. So that's sort of you know you can choose an enemy unit and they fight last really really good i mean the warlord traits they're pretty good all pretty nice uh chapters now i'm gonna basically try and round up various of blaze and give me my, my view in it before going to kill space one because a lot of changes here as well it's really nice uh you know uh more where they came from uh, at the end of your movement phase pick a unit of chaos a uh, red corsairs chaos space means if that is on the battlefield remove from the unit from the battlefield and set it up again Fully within six inches of the edge of the battlefield and more than nine inches from any model, it's at full starting strength. So you know damage. You know now red corsairs chaos space means has to be a chaos space marine unit by sounds of that. But still being able to like take damage from and cover, they're going to be rocking a two up save. They take a lot of damage and go right, pew, take them off for three command points and put them somewhere else more than nine inches away. Can be nice because it's chaos space means might not be. But certainly going to be nice if you take those chain swords and stuff. So yeah, could be good. Uh, yeah, within three inches. So yeah, uh, all life is worthless. The purge one command point essentially allows you to pick a pick an enemy unit that is within one inch of another one of your units, and you can fire them. So you're basically firing into combat. Really nice there as well. Uh, yeah. There's a whole bunch of them, you know, that are really, really good. Uh, Prescience, which is Scourged. Use the stratagem after your opponent sets up a unit that is arriving on the battlefields as reinforcements. Pick a Scourged infantry unit from your army that is 12 inches away from the enemy unit. You can immediately shoot at that enemy unit as if it was the shooting phase. Two command points. So, yeah, that's really good as well. Bunch of stratagems, all really nice. Uh, I really can't fault any of them. Uh, flawless host, we cannot fail. Use the stratagem when you pick a flawless host infantry unit from your army to fight in the fight phase. Until the end of the phase, you can reroll hit rolls for attacks made by that unit. One command point to get all rerolls in combat. Awesome. And there's our facts. Let's finish up a place. Let's finish up and then go into the codex because there's a ton of stuff in there. There, right. So Blaze is going to be really nice if you are using, you know, the old Chaos Space Marine codex, and I think that's really, really nice. I think it's good. I think the strongest part in that, more than anything, is not really the detachments, but the renegade parts. The renegade parts, it's only about four or five, six pages, but they are awesome. I really like them. Certainly pushed me towards renegades. The only problem with renegades, now that I think about it, and someone's probably going to comment before they hear me say it, the renegades can't use veterans of the long war, so you can't have that one where I think you cause sixes, you can't plus one to it. So now you can do that, because renegades don't get fits which is a big cost to renegade, but their legion rules are really, really nice. So I think that alone makes them quite good. There is obviously, if you want to go more thematic to attachments, they're really good, and you also get a lot of the updates from there into here, which is excellent. So I'd give it a good result, very, very nice. However, volume two, Chaos Space Marine book. Now, there are many things, people have spoke about this, the Chaos Space Marine book. People have seen stuff and they're a bit like, ah, you know, not too sure. And I am completely 100% sold on this book, especially when the digital versions are basically getting updated for free. 
I'll speak about the weaknesses, there are some of the book, but mainly, basically this sort of reorganisation of the book into a much more updated fashion, fashion is excellent. I hope they do it for other books in the future. I hope they do it for the rule book. It's gonna, don't want to speak about it too much. You know, in terms of my speculations, I don't know anything, but I hope they do it for the rule book because it's going to make it easier for new players more than anything to understand the game. And it gives them a chance to do a whole new, you know, not Dark Imperium book with uh, Death Guard and uh, box set. It'll be something new. Theories, theories, theories. Can't mention any more on that one. Cool. So, just my thoughts. So, in terms of a couple of changes, now I've not noticed everything in here, but here's the important ones. Start with the war gear. In the melee, in the melee weapons, there is a Thunder Hammer choice. So, we don't have Storm Shields, darn it, but we do have melee weapons, Thunder Hammer. It's not in, ironically, the Terminator melee weapons and the Champions one. So your Champions can't take it, but units that have access to melee weapons do. So I think that's things like Chosen, I think that's like Chaos Lord on foot, but not Terminator armor. So you can give one in a jump pack and go, ha ha, I've got Thunder Hammer too, but I don't rock a three up invul, but I do have four up invul. But uh, yeah, I like that. That's obviously inspired from Blackstone Fortress, where uh, we had our first Chaos Lord with Thunder Hammer, and a cool looking Thunder Hammer that as well. So I can dig it. Really, really nice. We also have the new heavy weapon, Reaper Chain Cannon. <gasps> that is pretty awesome. Can't be taken by Fallen, but you're gonna stick that in Havoc because it is a cool guy. So let's speak about some of the units. Uh, Abaddon the Despoiler, he has gone up, I believe, in strength. He went from strength four to five. Uh, he's gone up, I think, a wound to wound six, which is excellent. Uh, and the other change on there as well is, I believe, the Talon of Horus. Obviously, make it times two, makes him strength ten. Yikes. But he's also AP minus four. I think he was three before. So he's taking quite a buff on that side as well. And I believe, off the top of my head, I can't remember his previous points. I'm pretty sure he was about 240. I'm pretty sure he is still the same. Yep, so 240. So Baden and that badass model. You're looking like a winner. Love it. Uh, I've played him in uh, Grimdark Champion and he just cleaves through people. So yeah, about him I'm really happy. They've got Harkon in there. Uh, you know, will they change him again? Will he won't? Raptors? Who knows? I think they're quite happy with him now. Demon Prince, I don't believe has changed. Karn the Betrayer, I don't think he has changed. I've not checked all of them extensively when it comes to special characters. Uh, I'm sure someone will go through every single little minute change. But generally, a lot of these ones, obviously, you know, the Chaos Lord on foot has access to melee weapons. You've got your Thunder Hammer, if you doth wish. Master Possession in there. So yeah, very, very nice. Exalted Champion is still in there. A couple of people worried when it came to Exalted Champion. Would the take over the Master of Executions? Eh, sorry, the Master of Execution take over? No, it's a brand new unit. You still have your Exalted Champion. So that's really nice in there as well. Let's go into Lord Discordant if that's how you pronounce it, uh, on Hellstalker. As far as I can see, there is no other option to take him off it. He's going to come on it. So, what I absolutely dig this unit, it is expensive though. To go into points, Lord uh, Lord Discounted on Hellstalker is 150 points, add on an auto cannon, I think it's 10 points, add on the chain glaive, uh, which I think is free, I'd imagine it would be free. Uh, da, 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 is it? Impaler chain glaive is going to be free, surely. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, yep. But the Bale Flamer, which is the one I would personally put him with, is going to be 30 points. So it kind of pushes him up to the 180 point mark, but I'm okay with that. One or two weaknesses aside. So he has Blissical Web Skill Plus, is 2 plus. Excellent. Strength 4, a little bit weak, but his weapon's awesome. Toughness 6, would have been nice at 7. He has 12 wounds, which means he is targetable. Ah! Mmm, dangerous. Uh, four attacks, leadership nine, two up save. Fine. In terms of his deterioration, his only deteriorating one is his movement, which goes from 12 to nine to six as he takes wounds. His additional attacks, this is the ones I imagine comes from the Hellstalker, go from five to four to three. So his chance to hit doesn't deteriorate and his natural attacks don't deteriorate, only his additional and his movement. So that's quite good in that one. That means his deterioration table, in my eyes, is not so bad. The movement part is the one that hurts the most. Uh, he's got mech and, uh, mech and drills, which is the bear can fight, can make two additional attacks with this weapon, uh, same as uh, you know the warp smith and everything. 
but we'll talk about the Impaler Chain Glaive. Now the Chain Glaive is plus two strength, so making him strength six, minus two AP and two damage. Very nice. If the bearer made a charge move or performed a heroic intervention, the attacks of this weapon are times two strength, not plus two strength. So we can either be strength six or strength eight on the charge, essentially. That's really nice, that's really, really good. The Hellstork itself has attacks. It's got a Magma Cutter, which is a, yep, you can go with the Mother Fiend, I don't rate them. It's got a Blade of Limbs and Tail, which is a melee weapon, plus three strength, uh, making strength seven, minus two uh, d uh, AP, D3 damage. After Lord Discounter makes its close combat attacks, you can make attacks with the Hellstalker. Make a number of additional attacks as shown in the damage table. And that's with the Blade of Limbs. Really, really nice, you know, not bad. It also has the Techno Virus Injector. Plus 4 strength, minus 4 da uh, AP, D3 damage. After Lord Discondent makes its uh, close combat attacks, you can make attacks. Uh, you can make attack with this Hellstalker. Make a single attack using this weapon profile in addition to the Hellstalker's Bladed Limbs and Tails. It's another attack. Each time a wound roll on uh, on an attack made with this weapon is successful, when targeting a vehicle, the unit suffers D3 mortal wounds in addition to normal damage. So really nice. This thing, you know, is expensive, but you're going to barrel it down towards opponents and really maybe cause some damage. Uh, yeah, I can dig it. One thing I'd probably say, Demon, is a vehicle. It's not going to get Legion rules, which I'm a bit disappointed by. I really hope, now unless they've got it somewhere where they say Lord Discordant does get Legion rules, I really hope they do, rather than it being a Demon engine. Uh, so we're going to go with them. Infantry Bikers, Hellbrutes, and, and Demon Princes get it, but they don't mention Lord of Discordant. 180 points if you're going to go with Belflamer. Pretty good, I'm going to use it a couple of times, see how it works out. I think it's basically one of those ones you're going to barrel down the battlefield, hopefully get first turn and get a lot of movement, can be really, really nice. If not, you can warp time it. Masters of Executions, I, uh, it's meant to be a character killer without an involve themselves. If it gets charged, it's probably going to get absolutely slaughtered, it's only got four wounds. And if it gets in combat, hopefully your opponent doesn't have a, an involve save. If it doesn't, then you're going to cause quite a wee bit of damage. If you do have an involve save, it's going to be really, really tricky. Dark Apostle has a stupid amount of different things. Now, this is an important part I want to speak about. A lot of people are annoyed in the fact that they've changed the Dark Zell tree from always reroll uh, attack uh, hit rolls uh, within combat. Now, it does have that ability now, but it's also got a whole bunch more. They only go off on a three to see if they're heard. Uh, now, uh, if you know that's a bit more of a tricky one. People are saying now you've only got a two and three chance of the prayer being working and then having the, you know, the prayer work. The Dark Disciples, which I believe are quite cheap to take alongside them. Uh, Dark Disciple, I believe, will be an elite unit. Yep, five points for two models, ten points. Essentially adds, I believe, add one to dice roll if the prayer chanted by Dark Apostle is heard. So you're going to always take them along with Dark Apostle, meaning that unless they can be killed, which I believe they're treated as characters and can't be shot, then, uh, yeah, followers uh, basically can't shoot them uh, while they're within two inches of the Dark Apostle. It means you're going to reliably get this ability on a 2+. plus. So let's quickly go into the prayers, because there's what I mean, there's a whole bunch of them. Some are good, some are not so good. The, the ones that are on the Dark God specific, they do buff the actual uh, Dark Apostle himself, and I don't think that's the best. Uh, certainly one of them, I think the corn one, there's a vastly better one in there. So the one I like the best, uh, and you can, do, you can debate with this one, uh, Benediction of Darnus, if this prayer is heard, pick one friendly legion unit within six inches of the priest, subtract one from hit rolls made for attacks with ranged weapons that target that unit. That's really good, essentially your Dark Apostle is giving you a minus one, add an Alpha Legion, yep, minus, minus, minus. Always good on Havocs and Blur Rares, I'm a big fan of them. So yeah, not bad. Uh, yeah, I like it, I can dig it. That one's I find the, the most useful. Whether it's worth putting in the points for a Dark Apostle, which is 100 points. 100 points, you're 110 points to possibly get a minus one. And it might not work every turn, is a bit tricky. Gives them also a bit of protection in your backfield as well, so there is that. Uh, there is other ones, Omen of Potency, if the player is heard, add 3 to the priest attack characteristics, in addition if the, prayers, uh, if the player is heard, this uh, priest melee weapon have minus 4 AP, 
that means it quite hard, hits hard quite in combat. The Corn Priest is add two to the Priest's strength characteristic. I think I'd rather take minus four AP and three attacks than plus two strength. That's just me. Yeah. Uh, uh, Warp Sighted Plea, if this pair is heard, pick one friend Legion unit within 6 inches of the Priest. Add one to it rules for attacks made with ranged weapons. So, I like the ra you know, another one, so, uh, so, uh, Soul Terror Portent. If the prayer is heard, pick one friend Legion unit within 6 inches of the Priest. Add one to wound rolls for attacks made with melee weapons by this uh, model in that unit. Yeah. It's a tricky one. It's a tricky one. It's still as long as you've got like dark disciples nearby and they're alive, you're gonna get your. You've got more choices. You're gonna hit. You're gonna get your prayer off on a two plus. It's still quite expensive. So oof. it's gonna be gonna be odd. The other thing as well, and this is quite important, is that uh, it knows dark disciples prayer and one prayer from prayer to dark gods at the start of each battle round. So if you're in a transport, then you can't activate the prayer. Yeah, as far as I'm aware, because it's not technical in the field. Ah, that is really kind of difficult. They may have to FAQ it where they say, you know, if they're not in the field, but essentially you then come out of the transport and you've lost the prayer, you have to wait to your next turn. It means that you're more inclined to go with your backfield units for maybe protection, and one extra unit getting a bit of a buff is a bit difficult. Ah. Really interested to hear what people have to say when it comes to Dark Apostle. A few people are not entirely happy. Chaos Space Marines, let's speak about this one. So, 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 so. People are both delighted and unhappy at this. The price of them in terms of actual real world money has gone up. I think they're working quite in the way of Death Guard, where when you had the Death Guard box, there were, and I've had many of them because I've started the collection. You had so many options in that spruce, it was unbelievable. You could build them in a whole ton of way. I think they're doing that with Chaos Space Marines, but when you give so much variety and then you have like essentially another sprue in it, that costs extra money and it's making them a wee bit expensive. I think it's a good thing that they have updated them. I think it's definitely worth it in terms of if you're a new player or whatever. Yeah, great. Really, really good that they are getting an update. Old models getting updated, I think, is going to be a real selling point when it comes to this edition. So yeah, I can dig it. I like it. I like it. I think it's just good to have new updated ones. Plenty of options, hopefully. I mean, we're probably going to stay all bolt guns anyway, but it's nice to have them there. Hopefully, they have some of the heavy weapons in there as well. We'll see. Yeah. Well, partly because I'll need to go into havocs later on why that's interesting. But it's nice to have them on there as well. Cultist Mere Mortals, darn it! Can't give us one thing without taking one thing back. Uh, so, yeah, Terminator's got new models. I don't really see anything different on them in particular, but Terminator's got new models. Cool, I can dig it. I just made like 23 of them and got them painted. I'd say the models haven't changed extensively, so I'm okay not to change them, but they're a bit more dynamic pose. Certainly having old units updated, I'm never gonna complain with. Uh, Greer Possessed, Possessed, etc. Corn Berserkers, let's speak about this one. A lot of people are angry about Corn Berserkers not getting updated. I'm going to give you my personal feel on this one. I'm okay with it for now. Why? I believe they will update Corn Berserkers when they actually do a World Eaters Codex. Well, they won't, they don't know. But Death Guard, Thousand Suns, both been do it, done. I just believe when it comes to Corn Berserkers and Noise Marines, if, if and when they bring out the Codex, they're going to update the unit. Uh, it's kind of inevitable. Corn Berserkers badly need it because they are a very reliable combat one for even if you're just playing basic Chaos Space Marines, they are super reliable and super good at it. And their loadout, and I think I said this in the review for them, the loadout for them doesn't really work in terms of the sprue they've got. So I think they badly need a new sprue. I don't think it's in their any intentions to do so until they do a World Eaters Codex. When they do that, I have no idea. People have been speculating for Emperor's Children for a while. I don't know, I don't know, but uh, I believe that's when we'll see new sprue for Corn Berserkers, and I really hope we do, because they hit so well when they do get in combat. Uh, I can accept them not getting updated, I would have loved if they did, but we've had so many new things actually come out already. 
Utilators, as far as you can see, there is no real difference. They do not get the upgrades uh, that uh, Obliterators did. They are still Toughness 4, where Obliterators are Toughness uh, uh, toughness 5. Uh, yep, and obviously uh, Obliterators got plus 1 wound. Uh, you know, Mulears, oh man. How many points do they know? I think when I said in the review they were quite cheap. Uh, mutilators, mutilators. I mean, the 35 points model, so same as for 105 points for unit. Not bad for like a good wee denial unit that can deep strike in and then your opponent has to think about them. Yep, okay. Uh, War Raptors Fallen, Chaos Spawn, yep, I don't know if there's anything different here. Havocs. This is, this is where we're gonna get into. Havocs, 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 Havocs. I'm a big fan of, obviously, in this edition, I think we now favour a bit more when Devastators come in. Uh, I've fought against various armies where they've had Devastators and they've been really good. Moving into the con codexes, they've been a bit more difficult to work. Uh, long Fangs are particularly good, but they gave a buff to Havocs. So it's not just Long Fangs that are getting a good weed buff in that as well. What buffs did they give Havocs? Two simple ones. They made them Toughness 5. What? Like, they, are they not just basic Chaos Space Marines? But yeah, Havocs now are Toughness 5. You'd find that Havocs would try and, like people, if they see a big, long, far range unit, they're not going to use small arms fire to try and take them out, particularly, usually as something, if I'm playing like Stellar Robots, I'm instantly going to light them up with strength 4, minus 2 AP, uh, ignore armor, uh, ignore cover. So, Toughness 5 means against small arms fire, they are going to survive a bit more. Excellent, I'm really happy with that. Secondly, they gave them stabilize, Stabilization Talent. This unit can move and fire heavy weapons without suffering the penalty to their hit rolls. Excellent! So you can just move and not suffer penalties. Excellent! Why, why, why? So you're probably asking yourself, how much does this cost then? You know, oh, it's going to be an extra 2-3 points over basic Chaos Space Marines. So Chaos Space Marines are 13 points. Havocs are 14. One point for an extra toughness and ignore the effects of heavy. Awesome. I like it. I'm really, really pleased with that. I am surprisingly really pleased with that. I think it's really good. So the next thing we've got to speak about is I believe their new weapon, which is an interesting one. Off the top of my head, it is going to be 20 points. The Reaper Chain Can, so 20 points, meaning a single one armed to this is 34 points. However, what does it do? if I can find the stats, I believe the stats are this way. So the Reaper Chain Cannon, I'm almost there. Reaper Chain Cannon, 24 inches, so it's a little bit short, but remember you can move and ignore the effects of heavy. Uh, Reaper Chain, it's heavy eight per one, uh, strength five, minus one AP, one damage. Essentially, you know, it's like the heavy bolter, you know, the good old heavy bolter, which is a lot cheaper, higher range, but it's got five more shots per heavy bolter. Heavy bolter is super cheap for these days, I think it's like five points for it. No, heavy bolter is ten points, so it's double the points, you'd get a lot more shots at a shorter range. You're plus one toughness, and then you've got, you know, uh, you know, you don't suffer the effects from move. So how would I, how would I do these? So you could go you know, in the back range, use your missiles, etc., which is all nice, put them in cover, cool. If you want to go down the Reaper uh, chain, I would possibly go down that by sticking two units of Havocs in a Rhino, just hope they survive, you know, the Rhino don't get touched or anything like that. And then in your neck, if you lose, if you get first turn, great. If you don't, second turn you want to try and survive. As soon as the, your turn comes up, Jump down the Rhino three inches, move six inches if you're so inclined, and then just well down with, I think if four of them have got these, then it's 32 shots. If there's two units of them, then it's gonna be 64 shots. If as long as Cacophony works the same, add in an R32, which is 96 shots. Add in Veteran, so one of units is gonna be plus one to wound. Ugh, that is deadly, and I think it's going to be roughly, you know, 160 something points for one unit of Havocs. I can dig it! I love it! I've said that way too many times, don't want that to become a thing. Yeah, Havocs have taken quite a good boost. I'm intrigued to hear what people think. I think that's a worthy addition. Obliterators, let's go into that one now. Now, Obliterators are an interesting one. They took a buff when it came to Shadow Spear. 
plus one uh, to their toughness and plus one wounds, which is really nice, and they've got their combat attacks. Interestingly, and I could be wrong, I think in Shadow Spear there are a bit more points. Blair Airs are now back down to 65 points. Awesome. So you've now got, uh, you know, 195 points when you field the Blair Airs again. Excellent. 18 shots. Teleport in, don't teleport in. Veterans them. Uh, cough near them. Sweet. Awesome. People must have reacted to the points and went, no, I'm pretty sure they were like 80 points, I could be wrong, or 85, they were quite expensive. Well, Blur Rares, as far as you can see, 65 points per model. Mm. Uh, hopefully they haven't added points to their war gear, because that would be cheeky, flesh metal guns, nah, and crushing fists, nah. Awesome, really, really good news. I mean, the heavy sport seems to be the biggest one when it comes to these. And uh, then you've got all the other stuff, the Venom Crawler, etc., Helldrake. Stuff like that. The Nicolith Crown is your. Uh, how is it? It's okay. It basically means that you know, you know, every unit within I think units uh, within it have a five up interval while they're within six inches of it. In addition, you can reroll psychic tests for chaos strikers that are within six six inches. Yeah, not bad. I'd imagine if you are going to take it, I'm not sure on it yet. It's got a ranged weapon that's a pistol at six inches which is ah uh, yeah five up involves not bad but when you're rocking a three up armor save a lot of things are going to be shot by is minus two ap maybe three yeah it's not bad uh psychers become a bit more reliable but yeah you need to be really close in terms of the actual legion traits this is the point that's disappointing they haven't changed any of them certainly as far as i can see they could have really expanded on these quite extensively and I think when it comes to whenever they do Space Marine 1 I think the reaction of these are going to force people them to really not just Space Marines but maybe future ones go maybe we do need to work on the, the first Legion traits uh, or Forge World so for instance everyone's going to say their Codex has a poor trait everyone is biased Space Marines have a few pure ones Admech uh, as well. Grey Knights, I think their one for theirs is really poor. The first couple ones do need to get updated. I'm not going to mention, uh, I mean everyone's going to probably say this one needs to change in this codex. You can mention one, the Space Marine ones, and I'd argue Chaos Space Marines should have got that and I don't think it's going to happen anymore. You've got your Renegade ones which is nice, uh, really good, it's just a shame that you're going to give up vets, veterans along war to take them. They are by far superior except for maybe Alpha Legion uh, in here. Even Renegade Chapters Dark Raiders has the Advance and Charge one. You just go, you just take the one from Vigil of Blaze. Uh, you'd always just take that one because then you get your command points extra. So I think that's a better mistake in that one. Obviously they'd have to spend a lot of time on rule balancing if they did, but I think it's a missed opportunity. Ugh. In terms of uh, stratagems, don't think there's any change. Uh, you've got your prayers to the Dark Gods, which are there. You've got Dark Hereticus and uh, the Malefic ones, uh, which is okay, you know. Uh, interesting that one. I don't think any of the artifacts have been changed at all. And the Warlord traits, as far as I know, haven't changed. The points, there are going to be point changes, uh, whether it's from chapter approved or not. I mean, I mentioned already, the Blur Rares have changed. But generally, just having the updated points in here is fine. And I think that's quite important. So, 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 so. I think it's time to end that there. What do I think of these two books? Please don't fall over. I read them both. I think there are missed opportunities in both, uh, but generally I think they're pretty positive. I think there's, they've certainly focused on weakness parts of the Chaos Space Marines. The core of it, obliterators have its chaos space means and terminators. Things that should be iconic, they've improved their models and abandoned. Yeah, we didn't get corn berserkers, but I think that's all a matter of when you see world eaters, you're going to see corn berserkers, you're going to see a terminator unit, and you're going to see a cultist unit. Don't want to speculate, I'm trying not to in the future ones, but that's what we sort of saw in terms of pox walkers, plate marines, and then we've got two units of terminators, and then we've got scarab cult, zangors, rubrics. Ah, stop it, Ross. We'll, we'll see what the plans are when it comes to these. Chaos, 
fixing their core. I think I complained a few months back that I wanted to see their core get worked on. They've improved the models, maybe not, you know, they've added a lot of Demon Engines, Lord Discordant, but they've brought the model range back up to the core stuff really well. And I think that's important. That's really good. In terms of being the first codex that's had the, the sort of cleanup, I think with that comes problems, errors, and other things. Uh, after all, this was just more of a cleanup, so don't you shouldn't have expected major rule changes such as the Legion rules. That would have been good, but it didn't happen. Yeah, so I think it's going to be a while till we see a new codex, but we do have Legion rules here, and they are awesome. So what am I going to say in terms of what you should buy? I think it's really up to you. I think this is a solid buy for any Chaos player at all. Uh, if you're a digital one, go you. Future there, you're going to get that excellent. Really good. It's going to make your, if you really like the books, it's going to make it a lot, lot cleaner. So excellent. I really dig it. And I personally like the books more than digital versions just because I have a row of books, too many of codexes, and I love them. So I'm really excited to have that one there. Vigilus is chaos. Uh, you know, if you love setting up campaigns and playing different games with players, that's going to be partly for you, but it's predominantly chaos. In terms of best parts is that they have detachments which are certain parts which are better, which is nice. It, it mainly is your sort of renegades and black legion ones. That is where if you're a chaos player you're going to get real, you know, it's only a couple of pages, but really, really nice and a big addition to them. I mean, the renegade ones are just awesome. Their legion rules are really, really nice and I love to hear what people's thoughts on them. What are people going to do? I think this is a great practice update in the books, you know, giving out digital ones free, excellent, so good, it's cleaning up the game. These are just going to happen when we bring out new narrative ones, if you're into narrative, different games and everything, nice, and then you get additional rules relevant to them as well. I think if you're a Chaos player, you've got to buy both, sadly, but if you're an existing Chaos player, buy this and it means you do have chapter approved, vigilous plays to get the most out of it and your Chaos Space Frame book. But this does tie up quite neatly as well. Yeah, yeah, I don't want to tell people what to do on that one. Ooh, uh, I want to hear people's views and opinions. There is so much when it's come to probably just chaos uh, that I'm really excited to hear what people think. I'm a huge chaos player, second faction, fa uh, second faction I like the most after Dark Elder. I love Dark Elder. Uh, so, you know, I think this is a huge cleanup for chaos space means and adding a little bit more. Lost opportunities, but we never know what the future holds. So thanks again for watching. I probably went way too long, but I covered two books. Uh, please comment, share, like, and subscribe. I know the first comment's going to be uh, too long. Please comment, share, like, and subscribe. I really want to hear people's views on this. Just rant away, let me know. Uh, I'll, I will make sure I will respond to just about all of them over the weekend as I can. Uh, check us out on social media. We've got a bunch of projects coming in. There's going to be a bunch of chaos coming. So we are working on that one as well. As soon as that Abaddon comes out, oh boy, it's hitting the paint table. It's going to look amazing. Uh, check us out on Patreon as well to help support the channel, bring you more content, because we love doing so. And it just means that our, our future, we can do more things with the community. We can help you out and bring you just better content. And we just can't do it without your support. So we absolutely love it. Thank you so much. And again, thanks again. And we'll see you on another, another Tabletop Salt Battle Report.